We are Charles and Deborah, two workaholics who gave up our desert homestead for a retirement abroad in Panama. Join us for our adventure. Hello, Jubilados. I'm going to take a little walk along the beach here and discuss stuff as after my first six to eight weeks here, right before I actually get ready to head back to the U.S. So Finn is running around me and uh, you may hear me yell at her several times, <laughs> especially if she gets too far off or starts to get into a fight with another dog. So a few things I want to discuss. Uh, some things that people don't really tell you about Panama and things that you need to uh, consider moving to Panama. One thing, customer service is in some places absolutely amazing and you will be surprised at the stuff they do. The other day we had a mattress delivered to our house for literally three dollars. <laughs> They brought it in from, they shipped it across the country and then they went it up at the local store and they brought it out to our house for three dollars. That stuff's shocking. I had uh, three ladders were supposed to be delivered uh, in two days to the house and that cost me a whole six dollars. So that type of stuff is amazing. Shopping at stores can be very interesting. I went into Las, or not Las Tablas, I went into Chitre the other day. Uh, one of the larger towns just uh, north of here. And I had already purchased a GPS and a satellite communicator. I paid for it, had paperwork, all this stuff. They said it was going to take two days to get it. So I go back to pick it up. Oh no, a whole new set of paperwork needs to be done. All sorts of new stuff has to be filled out. It's just really time consuming. I went over to the battery shop because I had a depth finder for my kayak and went to the battery shop. They first of all wouldn't let me in. So I pull at the door, they wouldn't let me in. I pull at the door and I look at the guy inside and he just stares at me. I tell him I kind of need in and he wouldn't let me in. Finally, one of the other guys came along and he let me in, but he told me to sit in the seat. And uh, another guy came in behind me and he walks over and he grabs a number off the wall. It's like, well, I guess I need to go grab a number. So I go up and I grab the number off the wall and I sit there. And I sit there, and I sit there, and they wait on the other guy that came in. And then finally the guy comes over to me, and I tell him I want this battery. And he's basically asked me, what do I want it for? I'm like, uh, for fishing, pescado. Uh, of course, I don't speak Spanish as well as uh, Deb does. But then he just kind of stares at me, and I'm like, I'm using it. I tried to find out Death Finder. I was looking at all sorts of stuff online trying to figure stuff out. Anyway, he didn't want to sell me the batteries. I had cash. I wanted to buy the battery. He did not want to sell me the battery. So he and I kind of go back and forth, back and forth a few times. And finally, it's like, dude, give me the battery. I want to buy that battery right there. And I kept pointing to the battery, pointing to the battery. Finally, he gave me the battery and he wrote on the receipt, Pescado. <laughs> Whereas, I guess he had to have a reason why I had to buy the battery. <laughs> it kind of shocked me that uh, something like that. So I ended up going to uh, ask him, or they actually had an advertisement in the store advertising a battery charger and maintainer. And I pointed to it and uh, he goes and he walks over to the counter and he's like, no. And I'm like, pointed to it again. He's like, no. So I assume they didn't have one. But one thing in this country you'll find is that when one person can do the job, five will uh, be assigned to do it. So he goes over and he fills out a piece of paperwork and he sends me to the counter. 
I go to the counter and I'm standing here waiting on the lady to actually do everything he just did. <coughs> Excuse me. She did it over. Rewrote out the receipt. Rewrote out stuff. Asked me for my ID again. Asked me for all the stuff. And she was rewriting everything again. After she rewrote everything and all this, I'm sitting here looking at the wall and the exact item that I had pointed to and he said no was not available is hanging on the wall. Uh, rather than buying it and I figured it would take, I'd have to go back to him, have it rewritten, then bring it back to her and have it rewritten. I just went ahead and walked out without it. I went down to a Nove store, which is nearby and bought the exact same thing and probably for about $10 cheaper. Um, when Deb and I were in Panama City a few weeks ago picking up our sedulas, a uh, very similar experience. Uh, we go into a store and literally four people handled us. We went in, we saw a salesperson, we pointed at what we wanted, let him know that was what we wanted to buy. He filled out paperwork, he sent us to a cashier. The cashier then sent us to another guy. And then the other guy actually sent us to another guy who went into the back, got the item, brought it out. And then another guy unboxes it, shows it to us, and it shows us that everything works. And then we're allowed to leave with the item. I walked literally into a store next door to it. And we bought, actually bought Deb a Fitbit there. And the same person that picked it up, walked up, rung us out, and we walked out the door with a Fitbit just like we would in the States. So I'm not really saying this to complain. I'm just saying this that is something that you probably should be aware of is that when you come to this country, you've got to take the tranquility attitude and just try to relax a little bit and just go with the flow. There you literally go into one store and it'll operate just like it does in the States very efficient very quick one person sees you in get your stuff get you out the door uh you go to another store and they may be five people have to touch an item before you can get out the door now today i did something that i haven't done and that was order something online in country so i will find out uh wednesday it is currently monday I will find out Wednesday if it actually arrives to the location we did. Vegetables and fruits, they're delivered to our house. There are people who drive across the country, which is about five hours. They pick up fresh fruits and vegetables from the bread basket of Panama. They bring it back locally. They stock some of their stands with it. They put it in their trucks and they drive up and down the road with loudspeakers. And Deb, got to know one of these people she had them come down to buy our house he drives by our house and we usually get first pick uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and god they're great fruits and vegetables it is amazing how good the pineapple in this country tastes um, cucumbers I mean super fresh everything is just fresh and it is amazing uh chicken i have never had chicken like i've had in this country you get breasts in the u.s a lot of times they're dried out they've been frozen uh, even uh, a lot of them are grain fed and stuff here the chickens are usually free range a lot of them eat all the bugs and insects but you talk about juicy meat the chicken here is just amazing uh pork I have had hit or miss with pork. You will not find ground pork here like we have our sausages in the U.S. But you can find links in places. Uh, you can go to places like Riva Smith uh, and the larger cities and find actually ground pork. But just finding it in the regular local stores, that's not something you'll find. Uh, the beef. Hamburger tastes a little different here. Every other type of beef, I have to say, you're pretty much shit out of luck. Beef here in this country is pretty much all fed off of grassland and grass. 
and it's natural, which is great for the cows and stuff like that, and to the uh, bulls and the cattle. But the problem with it is, is that the taste of the beef comes out more wild. It's more stringy and very tough. I can adjust to that fairly well. That doesn't bother me. Um, I do miss things like ribeye steaks or really tender cuts, uh, filet mignon, that type of beef and stuff. Uh, we're supposed to be getting hooked up with some people who will give us some lamb and try that and see if that is any better uh, or has a different taste to it. We haven't gotten that yet. That's something we're still working on. Next fish. Oh God, the fish here is amazing. Of course, I'm standing right on Mensa Bay, <coughs> which is where a lot of fish comes in. And right now high tide is rolling in again, and you can see that behind me. And as high tide rolls in, the boats come in. And of course high tide comes in twice a day, and so the boats come in twice a day. And if you get down there right as the boats arrive, you can get any type of fish and literally a large portion of it has been swimming off the coast today. It is rarely more than a day old. It is never frozen. It may have been dropped on some ice, but it was as a full fish when it was dropped on the ice. The fish is amazing. It is tender. It flakes off. It is succulent. Oh, I love the fish, in <laughs> case you can tell. Uh, and of course, having a wife that loves to cook and loves to experiment with stuff like that is really great. And I highly recommend eating fish and chicken in this country. Uh, both of them are just amazing and totally different than what you would expect in the States. Um, other things that in the country that you would expect a lot of people tell you you don't need to know spanish in this country and if you're in boquete and probably petasi you can get by with knowing the minimal amounts of spanish however if you live anywhere else in the country and even in those cities if you're visiting other places i highly recommend you take spanish classes spanish courses and know how to speak Spanish. Even if I go into a store to buy a tool, they ask me questions up front and I'm immediately just like, <gasps> what is she saying? What is she saying? And they speak so fast. <coughs> I remember one of my friends, George, would always say, uh, he's from El Salvador, and he would always say that, yeah, I don't understand the way they speak. They speak too fast. And I was like, what? I thought Spanish was Spanish. And he's like, no, you gotta understand. If a New Yorker was here speaking really fast to you, would you understand that? And I said, maybe not. He goes, exactly. He goes, if you tell him to slow down, you'll understand everything. George would tell me to make sure that you tell people to slow down and try to enunciate each word. I don't even know how to say that in Spanish initially. And that right there is really what it takes in those situations is to be able to let them slow down understand each individual word and then I can actually get the gist of what most people are saying I got a lot more practice well anyway in about two weeks I'm heading back to the US I'm gonna do a nursing contract because of COVID and everything going on and help get everything caught up and paid for down here uh, as we bought furniture and a lot of extra stuff and did little house repairs along the way uh, we ended up racking up a little more cost than I expected in the beginning not enough to put us in any danger or anything like that but when being a travel nurse I can go back and work three months and that'll make a big difference so it's starting to get a little dark and I guess I need to be signing off a little bit since I have evidently been talking for about 15-20 minutes one thing though i can't say enough of about this country you got to come in with an open mind you got to take a tranquility attitude and just kind of go along with the flow something i really have a lot of trouble with but if you take your time you learn a little spanish along the way 
you will be amazed at what you can get in this country. And anytime you encounter a problem, rather than looking at the problem, look at what you can do to fix the problem. Deb and I went to Price Mart this past week and I bought four different types of battery packs to keep everything just kind of going. We can power a couple lamps, keep fans going. We can't run an air conditioner, but we can stay cool and we can keep functioning. That was one of our big things when we got down here is noticing that the power outages, you know, pretty much took us out of everything because within 10 or 20 minutes of going into a power outage, the Wi-Fi cuts out, the internet completely cuts out, and our cell phones cut out because the tower is actually on Uberito. Uh, it's as you go back into town. Uh, so in those situations, we have to just kinda find things to do. So all the Huvalados out there, Panama is a great country. I highly recommend it and I to all the friends and family we are doing fine great look behind me the ocean and then spin right around and there's our house so the house is behind me so 15 feet I can walk out and be in the water so I highly recommend it just have to adopt a slightly different attitude and understand that it's a different country, a different place, and adjustments have to be made. So you guys have a great day, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.